Welcome. Today, we're going to talk about while wow, you are not making money using old school money tactic in this new age money grab. It's semantics. It's a failure to understand what's going on. And I'm going to connect the dots. I'm going to teach you what you need to know, how to use this newfangled stuff, and to marry it to old school ways so you can make that newfangled money. If this is your first time here, I'm Glendon Cameron, your hustling godfather. What we do here is we get money through entrepreneurship, hustling. We protect money. We make money. We stack money. And we secure money. That's what we do here through entrepreneurship, through credit profiles, a lot of other stuff. Also, while you are here, and if you are broke, if you don't have any money, I got you. A free gift from me to you. Go below and get your free books so you can start making some money. Now, with that, let's get into how to pimp social media for fun and profit. I have been doing this for nine years. And when I first started to do this, I didn't know what I was doing. I had no clue. But I had in the back of my head some old school basic business fundamentals. You have an audience. You have a product or service. You need a methodology to talk to people. And you need to know how to sell. This is some things that I inherently knew before I got started. Now, one of the things that many of you guys don't seem to understand is social media unto itself is not a business model. What you have is someone who will go ahead and establish a robust Facebook business or you'll have someone establish a robust Instagram business, or you'll have someone establish a robust YouTube business on the platform. Right now, I saw a video tonight of someone who is going to probably make like 30000 maybe more in AdSense money. Now, this person has additional businesses, so if this was to disappear, which it will, it's not going to hurt them. But there are many YouTubers who are living 100% on AdSense money. And AdSense money goes up, it goes down, but they have established an on-platform business without creating an off-platform back-end business. This is where you take the new school technology and you marry it to old school fundamentals. Because essentially what you have here is you have people who have one or the other and a select group of people who have both, and an even more select group of people who have both, but also know how to really sell. And this is what separates, because social media, hands down, is one of the greatest things to ever come down the pike. Social media is amazing. It is awesome. You can be Billy Bucko in Kokomo, Indiana, And no one knows of you. And then you do one thing. Boom. The world knows who Billy is. The world knows that Billy lives in Kokomo, Indiana. And Billy will have his 10, 15, 20, sometimes 30 minutes of fame. Remember Chewbacca Bomb? (laughs) She had her fame. Everybody knew who she was. And it was like she wasn't positioned to make money from her 15, 20, 30 minutes. And this is what happens to many social media people who get massive exposure. Uh, They don't have an off-platform business. They don't have anything, nothing, not even an email list. In 2018, you still have people with these massive followings who still do not have an email list. Seriously, who still don't practice business fundamentals. Still. And a big part of this is there are people out here 
who are amazing in terms of being able to build a social media following. They know what levers to pull. They know who to talk. They know how to do their thumbnails. They knew how to do their Instagram. But without the platform money to back in, they can't do nothing. That is a fundamental weakness that will raid every platform of people who are making money once the platform moves to cheese, shifts the algorithm. So what you need to do is build a brand off of Facebook, off of YouTube, and learn how to manage that off of the platform. Now, I have people who find me through Google searches, you know, because the way it's set up, I know that when someone signs up, I know exactly where they came from and I'm getting more and more people. So what I have been doing using YouTube from day one is come on YouTube, take some of the audience and move them over here to my platform and build an email list, build a text notification list that's coming. Uh, for all you folks who are asking what happened to it, I had a rat, I had a narc. Someone said that I was doing something I wasn't, so they canceled my account and I have to find another one. So once I do, you'll know about it. Now, how does one do this? Because everyone studies how to grow on YouTube. Uh, everyone studies how to grow on Facebook, how to grow on Instagram, how to grow on Twitter, how to do a podcast. But very few people are talking about fundamental business activity, which is you need a product, but before you your product, you need an audience. Who is your audience? Who are you talking to? I'm about to get into the dirty stuff. I'm about to talk about Craigslist protocols. When I first started my marketing efforts, I had five targets. My first stuff was, hey, let's just go out. So this was women who fit my demographic to just go out and have coffee, go to the movies. Then I had FWB, Friends with Benefits. That was another Mark a uh, segment of the market I went after. And then I had three more we will not talk about. But the most craziest one is the one that got the most juice. Now, why did I have five targets? Because when you have a business, when you have an audience, there's what you want to happen. It's like, I want this target demographic to perform this way. This is what you want. This is called having an agenda. And then you take your agenda to the marketplace and the marketplace go, yay, we like that. Or the marketplace goes, miss me with that. I don't like it. I'm not going to pay you. Matter of fact, you're annoying me. This is the only way you're going to find this out is to actually present it to the market. It's kind of like the market's the king. The market's the king. So each time you're liking those commercials, dilly dilly, you're like, hey, king, you like this beer? Off with his head. Okay. Next marketer, you like this beer? Eh, it's okay. It's okay. You make some sales, but you don't make the sales you want to make. But you don't lose your head either. So you're still in the game. So then you get to come back to the king, which is the marketplace, and say, hey, you like this beer? Oh, this is dilly dilly. You're the man. You're the, you're the court jester. Here's a bunch of money. That's how it works. But many people don't want to do the testing. They don't want to hear that. No, you suck. Right now, if you notice, I'm doing a lot of drone footage. I'm changing some stuff up. And right now, I suck. I'm not good at it. I'm missing some transitions because once I put it out to the marketplace, to you, the king, and I was like, okay, that didn't work. That didn't work. Off with my head. But I keep doing it because I know sooner or later I'm going to bring up some beer that the marketplace, the king, is going to like. And typically, I will fail 10, 15 times before I create that beer that the market likes. Now, this is called a process. Many people are like, man, you failed 4, 15 times? You must really suck. Excuse me. How many times have you failed? Oh, I ain't even trying. I ain't going to fail. My heart can't take it. So one of the big things that happens is you have got to establish what kind of kingdom you want to serve and, and how you want to get in and take the king's head off. 
uh, this is what you want to do. You want to get into the marketplace and you want to replace the king like Apple. You know, Apple says, hey, the customers and everything, but Apple has turned us into the subjects. I am one of Apple subjects. I go out and get the new iPhone. I like I ain't going to get it uh, but because I'm part of the Apple ecosystem. If you're a creator. It's the best ecosystem out there for video picture sharing. There's nothing like Google that doesn't even come close. So with that, since they're so good with that, they have converted me from the king to now I am a subject. This is what I want to do to you. I want to convert you to a subject where you're now hooked upon my products like I'm your, your dealer, man. And I become the king because I'm getting all the money. Now, many people approach social media and you got to go back to 2009, 2010, 2011, YouTube. A lot of kids who were really good on YouTube, you know what they wanted? They wanted the ability to create a banner. You only get a banner if you were a YouTube partner. Everyone just had like a basic page. But if you got into the partnership program, you got a banner. And this is very important. Napoleon said he started winning wars when he realized that people would die for medals. Recognition. It's like, hey, you did X, Y, and Z. So now you get a banner. And this is what they were working for. Recognition. And then they sprinkled some money in there and all hell broke loose. So a big Part of this is social media should be your marketing plan. Social media should not be your business plan. And for most people, social media is their business plan. Uh, there was some guy, um, he, he does reaction videos and he worked really hard and his whole business is on YouTube, right? He did a video where he was getting, getting tired because he figured out for him to get that YouTube money, he had to consistently make the same kind of videos, which he was getting tired of. And he was stuck because he built his business on YouTube versus building a business off YouTube and using YouTube as a marketing arm. I have said this for years. If I was, quote, a YouTuber, oh, I would have been like four, three, four, five hundred thousand subscribers, but I would have been made 96 percent less money. <laughs> I ain't dying for no mellow. I'm like, I'm I'm like the guys like, okay, what's the heist? Two million? They ain't enough. My cut got to be 50 million. No, I, I am not picking up a gun. I am not. No, nah, I ain't doing none of that. I'm not dying for no mellows of recognition. You can play all that patriotic music if you want to. And since I am that kind of beast, I have used YouTube as my marketing arm for nine years. This is what you got to do if you're going to use Facebook for your marketing. And part of this is all the platforms will punish you for using them as their marketing. I mean, you're going to be a pimp. Pimp got issues, man. Pimp got problems and consequences because when you pimp YouTube, you pimp Craigslist, you pimp Facebook, you pimp the, you pimp the podcast. All of these things are like, hey, hey, we want this traffic to remain here. So what they're going to do is cut your traffic. They're going to spank you. But once again, if you set up your business, not trying to build a platform on social media, but build a platform, build a business off social media and use social media, you'll be OK. You'll be able because you'll have money to play the game. You will have money to weather the storm. Because if you notice this YouTube channel in comparison to other YouTube channels, and I will break this down, it doesn't look that big. But there's 10 million active YouTube channels, 10 million channels that load up at least of one video per week. 10 million. I am. Where am I? Let me show you. I will actually show you my ranking because I don't know what it is right now. <laughs> I really don't. So. Let's kind of get into here. All right. And lights, camera, and action. Okay. So I am. Let's make this a little bit bigger. All right. So they do break this down in categories. 
from a subscriber standpoint, which is not the best metric, I am 115th. Uh, video rank, view rank, I am 180,000. And the Social Blade rank, where I fall based upon their metrics and stuff, I am 540 out of 10 million. So I'm in the top 5%. Now, this is where it gets a little different. Like, okay, you see this? <laughs> right? They, they have no clue because, see, estimated yearly earnings, I make way more than that per month. Actually, I make that almost per week. And 224, and as you can see, I've grown because I went to Viz Summit to learn some new fancy uh, YouTube stuff, and I've been deploying it. and. Uh, I'm going to tell you, you know why I'm doing this? I want that YouTube button. And I am, what, 15,000 away. So more than likely, I'll get up to 90,000 and probably get it in February, maybe January. And after that, I'm going back to my my, my thing. <laughs> That's the only reason I'm trying to do that. But I'm in the top 5%. And, you know, talking to Daryl Eves, I know him. Actually, you know, when he sees me, he's like, hey, Glendon. Um I am probably in the top 1% in terms of earnings because my channel is small, but it performs like a channel with five to 10 million subscribers financially. So that's where I'm at. This is why you just cannot build your business on social media. You must pimp social media for your own selfish indulgent purposes that's what you need to do all right so let's see what we got up in here happy thanksgiving to everybody jonathan j if you don't try you fail every day oh uh, well, that has nothing to do with what i'm talking about uh i am the interstellar beyond there I don't care if I look short. Y'all think about the wrong thing. Yeah, because the thing is, you, you've got to do the whole business model thing because you got to pimp social media. Because, like I said, pitch, social media is a very powerful thing. But without the appropriate business back end, you're just wasting your time. Uh, there was this article of social media people who were broke, a million, a million followers and broke. You had people with a million followers and they were working at a coffee house. Million followers. Sure thing, Pedro. Good thing, Maxie James. Beyond the turn, I keep telling these guys it's not a Shopify business. It's a business you're building on Shopify. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Because that's the reality of it. And many people just don't. And it's very nuanced because it seems like all these people say I have an eBay business. You have a position on eBay that they allow you to have that any time they can go, you're gone. Same thing with Amazon. Same thing with YouTube. Except YouTube, there's way more tricks and things you can get around that. Uh, there was one guy who got kicked off YouTube, but because he knew how the system worked, they couldn't get rid of him. Uh, one million followers, that's not normal. That's still pretty substantial. I will say if you can get a million congruent followers, woo, that's about 10 million a year. If you can get a million congruent followers. Uh, no, everybody doesn't buy followers, man. Uh, Pedro, there ain't, there is no briefly. First of all, let's look at YouTube as a store. So let's say you have a store that's in the high traffic mall. 
And this mall gets a million people every day. They come in, they come into your store, but they never buy anything. Then you have another store. It's a smaller store. They sell stock tips. And I'm going to tell you, financial channels have the highest ad rates ever. Crypto, uh, stocks. I know a guy who has a stock channel. He has 10,000 subscribers. He makes 30000 a month from AdSense. You go in the store, and a lot of the people who shop in the store, even though it's not like millions, they actually buy. So you have this little store that's getting a fraction of the traffic of this bigger store, but the bigger store, it's just a bunch of looky loos. It's like, hey, that's nice, but eh, it's too expensive. Nah, I don't need it. That's how it works. How do you prepare for if a social media platform fails? Having a business. Remember how everybody was doing, I think it was Blab, Mercat, uh, Periscope, and everyone's like, hey, you got to do this, you got to do this. Did you see me do that? I felt that those things were going to disappear and they're all gone or people just don't use them the way they do. See, people are... People don't like radical change. I know that sounds crazy, but anything that is just way too fast for them, it's going to fail. The reason YouTube works is YouTube is TV. It's a smaller version of TV. It's a TV on your phone, but YouTube is TV. Everyone knows what TV is. YouTube is TV on demand. You go ahead and click. Oh, there it is. You watch it when you want to watch it. That's YouTube. Everyone knows what it is. What it looks like, what it feels and tastes like. But let's say YouTube was trying to do hollow, hollow projections. It would fail. Living delightful dream. Yes, video is extremely powerful. Extremely. Because if you can pimp YouTube very well, you can create a solid business without a lot of people because I'm getting into my ninth year and I consider this like we're going into the second half of my YouTube career. I'm going to be able, because right now what I'm doing is building a long-term business, which costs money, which doesn't make as much money as fast as people will want. That's the problem. Uh, in the video yesterday, the live stream, I showed you, uh, into the gloss, check her out. The glossier, what she did, she's built like a 60, 70 million dollar business in seven years. But out of those seven years, three years were spent on market research. Not one year, not two years, but three. So, all right, there you go. Now, for those of you, uh, there will be a video tomorrow, and it will have all of the Black Friday specials under it. And I'll let you know how long you have to give them. But tonight's Black Friday special, number 11, is to H undergrad. And you get everything. You get H undergrad. You get the art of holding. You get disruptive mail. And a year from now, and I'm going to go into this, you get to talk to me every week. Now, many people like, hey, Glendon, I need for you to talk to me now. Actually, you don't. What I have found, because I've done it, is most people want to talk about issues and things that they can find on Google or work out themselves. It is a confidence problem. It's like, hey, Glendon, is this thing good enough for me? That's the real question. But after a year of building your business, then we'll have different conversations like, hey, how did you find this segment of the market? OK, well, this is what's wrong with your sales plan, because there's something there for me to work with right now. Just talking and asking questions. That doesn't make you any money. Doing stuff makes you money. And that's what we're going to do. So that link is below. Holidays much bring out the freaks out of people. But anyway, that's what I got. Go below. Check it out. And I will see you guys tomorrow. Because the freaks are coming out and I got to go. Be sure to get your free books. They will help you hustle. They will help you make money.